Hello, welcome to the Cytoviva webinar on using the Cytoviva particle analysis tool. Uh, in particular, it's called the particle filter. Uh, what this tool allows you to do is to search your hyperspectral scan for particles. Uh, it will count them and it will also highlight where they are in the image and it will give you some data about each particle how many pixels each particle is based off um, its intensity and size which you can threshold in the tool and it will also show you the maximum mean intensity and the maximum and mean spectra of that particle so this can be very useful not just for counting particles but for also finding out information about your particles, such as uh, distribution of peak wavelengths and intensity, um, even seeing if there's some kind of relationship between intensity and wavelength, as we see in some particles. So I have a data cube open of some 100 nanometer silver, and we see the particles are pretty evenly distributed in the center area. So to use the Cytoviva particle analysis tool, uh, it's called Particle Filter. That's the name of the tool itself. Um, we open it, and these are the parameter parameters. The background filtering method is sum or max. We always want to keep this at max. Uh, the spectral max must exceed, and this is where you would put a threshold for how intense uh, the scatter off the particle must be for it to be counted as a particle. Obviously, you don't want to have this too low, and it will get background noise or maybe particles that aren't what you're looking for, uh, such as maybe dust or scratches or something on the glass. And then there's also a data max. So there's a minimum and a maximum. And this maximum is just to ensure that you don't count particles that have clipped. Maybe um, some particles are extremely bright. Sometimes clipping occurs. It's not the end of the world. However, you probably don't want those particles um, in your report or you're not interested in the spectrum because it, the, the data is clipped. So here uh, you have to know where your particles are sort of in range. So before you open this, we'll have to sort of look around and, and see where most of these particles are in terms of intensity. And then down here you can filter particles by size um, and you can set a threshold for the size. So if you say no, it will count if there's a big cluster of particles, like let's just say this was a big cluster right here, it might count this as, as one particle. But if we say by size and we keep it down to, let's just say on these particles, you know, 50 pixels, maybe, um, or less, it'll make sure not to count these large aggregates. So that's, that's something that you'll have to decide and play around with. But first, let's look at this spectral max and, and see. So in order to access the, the window to pull up the, the live spectra, you have to close this or already have this open. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go look around and there's a particle down here to the bottom right that's, that's kind of dim. So let's see what the threshold is on this guy. So it looks like it's around 4,000. So this would be one of the dimmer particles. So we could set the threshold at right around 4,000. And these other particles are quite bright, around 10,000. Yeah, so, so anywhere between four and 10,000, we can see. And this report will tell us the distribution of these. Uh, here's one that's up around 12,000. So the report will also tell us the uh, average intensity for each particle and the maximum. So we now we have a threshold we can open the tool up again. So you go, it's a, this is in the image window. It's not in the Cytoviva analysis tab. It's actually in the image window, so you won't see it. Uh, although there is an option here in the Cytoviva analysis tab to restore particle filter results. This will, the end result of this tool is it makes a sort of a map, although it's not a classification file, it's a data file that overlays and has data in it, such as um, how many particles, the size of each particle in terms of pixels, not actual size, but area, um, and maximum intensity, and more importantly, 
where the peak of that spectrum is. So you can restore the results from here, but you can also restore the results here under the cytoviva particle analysis tab. So open the filter again, and I believe we said we're going to put 4,000 as the minimum. So anything below that, it won't count. Maximum. So on when this particle filter tool was made, we had a camera attached to our spectrographs that peaked at 4,050. It was a 12-bit camera. Now, uh, in the last three or four years, we've sold cameras that are 14-bit. So this number actually will go to 16,300, but I usually just put 16,000 as the max. Uh, this is the dynamic range of the camera. It goes from zero to about 16,300. But to be safe, I put always put 16,000. So now we have a range. And by size, yes. Let's take this down to 20 pixels, I think. I don't think there'll be anything really bigger than that. And we can choose to save this data now, or we can just see what it looks like and then save it afterwards. So you hit OK. OK, so what we see here is this table that pops up. And this table shows, first of all, this particle count here, 87 particles. And if we look at the image, we see it highlighted all these particles in white. And it looks like it pretty much got everything. There's something dim here it didn't get, and some background noise. This particle right here it didn't quite catch. So we could change this. Um, also, what you'll notice is that it counted this as one particle. This is sort of an ag aggregate here. And down here, it counted this as one particle. These are actually probably so close to each other, it's probably impossible to have these actually separated. But <clears throat> So what this table does for us is it shows us how many particles, and then well, there's a list. So it's particles, eight, there's 87 particles, so it starts at particle 1 and goes down to particle 87. And the way this works is the particle filter counts and labels the particles from top left all the way down to bottom right. So particle number one is, should be at the most top left of the, of the scan. And if we go all the way down to particle 87, it's the one that's at the bottom and furthest right. So that would be this one here. And you'll notice that when we click on these, this window here, and if we right-click to show the plot key, there's a max and a mean signal. So this particular particle, and I'm going to zoom in on it, it's two pixels, has a maximum intensity of 4,763, and it has a peak wavelength of 529. So if we go up here, we see peak is right around 530, 529.1. So that gives us this information, but <clears throat> what's interesting about this is we can highlight each of these columns and sort them. So if we highlight the size column and we go to sort ascending, now it has ordered them instead of the order that the tool counts them in from top left to bottom right. Now we're just seeing them in terms of their size from smallest to largest. This one is 20, this aggregate here. And again, we see the max and mean signal. The signal's obviously increased because these are jumbled together and has a peak of 570. So if you wanted to see if there was some correlation between size and peak wavelength, you can do that. And also you can highlight all of these charts and export or save the data as ASCII. So this will actually save this as text data that can be imported into uh, some kind of spreadsheet. And you'll be able to run statistics on these or see if there's any kind of correlation between these three columns. Um, also, you'll notice here all of the overlay in the tool is in white. And we can check this off, and it might take a, a few seconds or even up to a minute, if there's a lot of them, it'll turn it off and then turn it back on. And then what you'll notice is that if you highlight, you know, any particle that it, it highlights, it turns green. And here there's this zoom in, you see it's kind of outlines the one you're on in green. But you can highlight 
holding down shift, you can highlight all of these. So we see now in this overlay, every particle that's green has a pixel size of two. So if you wanted to go to, let's say, wavelength and sort ascending and say, okay, I want to look at all the particles that are between 550 and 560. So we come to this one, hold down shift. We go to this one to 558. These are all the particles that have data between 550 and 560. And in addition to saving the data, you can export a region of interest and a spectral library. So this is another way to make a spectral library. So what you could do is you could say, okay, I want to make a spectral library of my particles only in these ranges from 550 to 560. So rather than having to go and hunt through the image to find this, this is a good way to, to do this. Um, so you sort the wavelength, find the range you want, and then highlight just this range and you can export to spectral library. And in this option, it gives you all particle spectra, mean only, or particle spectra, individual particle spectra and mean. Of course, we just want individual particle spectra for a spectral library. Um, output is always integer. And then we can name this here. And now we have a spectral library. If we right click to go to the viewer, we can see all of these spectra. You just hold down the arrow key after selecting. So these are about a, looks like about 180 spectra here um, in these particles. And so there's a spectra for each pixel. So you can add up all of these pixels and, and see how many spectra there are. Also, you can export this as a region of interest. So if you wanted to, you could have this region of interest. And of course, with the region of interest, you can select all and do the statistics like we've seen in the other tutorial or you can just save it. So here, if we wanted to save this, just save it on the desktop is a 550, 560 nanometer ROI. So that ROI is now saved and I'll show you how to overlay that. But now if you're if you're happy with the way that this is all displayed, you know, we can go back to sort. If you go to revert, it'll go back to just the usual numbering scheme. So if you wanted to save this just in this form, you can say save data and instead of to ASCII, uh, you can say particle data. So now we could say AG sixty X particle data one. I already saved it, so I can just say no. So now if we go to particle analysis and go to restore results and we go to the desktop, we have this AG60X and here it is. So it's back in its original form and you can also do things like delete. So let's just say, so we had an upper threshold for the size of the particles you wanted to count. You know, we, we set a 20, I think it was a 20 pixel. Um, threshold at the top, but if we wanted to threshold the bottom, what we could do is we could say, okay, let's just go between 10 and 20, so we could highlight 2, 8, let's do size. So we could get rid of all our 2s, I'm just holding down shift, going all the way to 10. So 9, so anything from 2 to 9 we want to get rid of, we just highlight these. And we just hit delete selected. 
And so now we're just left with four particles. So there's only four particles that have a range here. And now you can save this data again. And it's a .dat file, that's what it is. I can save this as data too. And even if you save it when you close it, it's going to ask you if you want to save it. If you've already saved it, don't worry about it, just hit no. Well, that concludes the tutorial on using the particle filter tool. Thank you.